I'm really excited about this new Morfolio Trace feature that allows you to dimension your drawings much like you would with an AutoCAD or BIM software. This new capability can save you a lot of time and hassles while improving precision. I'm going to show you this new feature with applications from construction site visits, interior elevations, and landscape urban design. So you can see where else you can incorporate this into your own workflow. The first application of this is for a construction site visit. So here I have the PDF loaded in Morfolio Trace. And if you're walking around the site holding the iPad, in case there are scenarios where you might be missing dimensions, you can use this new dimension feature and just adding these dimensions in red, like I have here. And this will provide some extra information to the contractor or whoever's looking at this. You can see I have dimensions put on this layer right now. And if you wanted just to make this into a sketch or ASK, so it's more legible to the person looking at this information, what you can do with the base layer is you can just turn off or turn down the opacity uh, like this, and then you can turn on the layer with the dimension. I've actually revised this part of the floor plan with a new layout, but that layout was missing some critical dimensions, uh, the overall height and the width. So very quickly, I can add this in with a new dimension feature and you can turn that on and off. So this is just one application why I think it's gonna be very, very helpful for you as a architect or interior designer going on site visits. And the next example is example of interior elevation. And if you're anything like me, I primarily design on the iPad. I draw, I sketch, I brainstorm. So we're at a point where this was already used as a presentation or it was incorporated into a presentation for clients. If you wanted just to add some dimension to this for the client, what I've done here is I've added three layers of dimensions. Watch how I can turn on the dimensions for this elevation, I can turn on the dimensions for this plan, so it's not very visible. But if I zoom in, you can see that I can turn on the dimensions to show some critical length for the enlarged area of this floor plan. And then lastly, I can add some dimensions to this elevation and this elevation. And this is useful for homeowners or for anybody to get a sense of the size. So for the sake of the presentation, you may not want to have this layer turned on because it's kind of messy looking. If you're sending it to someone who's looking at it for constructability, this might make a lot more sense. Of course, I'm showing this example for the interior elevation. You can do the same thing with plan, section, and exterior elevation. Now, the last example I wanna show you is more useful for a landscape or maybe an urban designer. In this example, we can see that this was used in a Apple Maps workflow. And because of the Apple Maps workflow, this drawing is already to scale when we were importing the background. So it's very easy to adding some dimension strings on the side of the building just to show the overall size of this. And I purposely made this white instead of red just so it looked better graphically. Now I'm gonna use this interior elevation to show you how the dimension feature work exactly. So to use this, this is located in your layers palette and it's this symbol right here. So we're gonna tap that to get a start. So the first thing we wanna do is, let's go ahead and draw a overall dimension from front to end. So I'm gonna tap once and you'll notice that there is a white circle that indicates that's the start of the dimension. And I'm gonna tap again. You can zoom in and out to really get a more precise view of where you want the next point to be. I'm gonna tap and then after tapping, you'll see that there is a hovering circle. And all we need to do right now is just to drag the circle to get a overall dimension for this length. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the height. So I'm gonna tap once and then I'm gonna tap the next point. Now, here's a little bit of a trick. Before you lift up on the next tab, you can wiggle this to kind of fake the length a little bit. If you know something is maybe nine foot four, but it's actually nine foot five, you can wiggle this point before you lift up. So right here, I'm just gonna point at nine foot four, and then I'm gonna lift up my pencil, and then I am going to add a overall height dimension like this. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more, and I'm gonna add a smaller dimensions to show the width of the cabinets and the height information. So to do that, I'm gonna do the same thing, but this time, instead of using a single dimension, I'm gonna use a string dimensions. So that's located right here. We're just gonna to toggle into this string dimensions, and I'm going to select this point and this point, 
So that's one foot nine. I'm gonna drag this down. And to find the next point on the paper, you just click on the next point where you need a measurement, two foot one. But I actually know that's more like two feet because that's the width of the refrigerator. So I'm gonna double tap to go back. And then I'm going to tap again. And before I lift up this time, I'm going to wiggle it until this dimension string says two four zero. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. And I know this is one for eight. When I'm done, I am going to tap the next point, which is the end of this door. And it's three foot four. I'm gonna keep going on this one. That's four foot. I know the oven is three feet. And then I'm gonna find this point as two foot one. And then wiggle my pencil just a little bit. And then this point, two foot one. And then lastly, I am not going to use this point as a point of dimension because I have the overall dimension down here. And I'm going to do the same thing here for the height. If you are interested in seeing more content about Movolo Trace, I offer a free three-part training where I'll show you the ins and outs of the Mofolio Trace app, from home design to rendering, landscape applications, and construction site visits. You can find it in the description below. If you want to add to this dimension, you can tap these three dots, and then you can add dimension. This is also going to let you modify or customize the look of the dimension as well. So once you've added in the add dimension, you can add more dimensions and they will all exist in the same layer, as you'll see right here on this point very quickly. And then just to show you, that is another overall dimension I've just added in the same layer. And if you click on this hog right here, this is going to give you a range of other settings, including the precision. So I currently have the precision set to one inch, but you could be even more precise up to, I guess, 132. And then in the style A and B, if we toggle this on, in the style A, this is more of a, like a handwritten feel. And in the style B, this is more mechanical. And you can increase the size and decrease the size of the lettering. And lastly, you can change the color to anything you want to. And you can do all this retroactively, which just means you can edit this later on if you're not happy with a red, if you want it to be black to be less visible, you can do that totally afterwards. If you want to, let's say, take away or remove a dimension, if you made a mistake, we're just going to click on this select feature right here with this arrow. And now you can kind of faintly see the dimensions that's currently grayed out. And you want to take this dimension out right here, all you need to do is just tap on this and it's going to highlight it in yellow. And then we can hit on this delete icon and that's going to take away from that mistake. And now there's a little bit of flexibility on where you might want to add the dimensions to the layers. You can do it all individually to one layer or you can separate it out into different layers if there's a need for that. But however, right now, there doesn't seem to be a way to merge the layers or to move it from one layer to the next. Hopefully that's something that we can expect in the future. There's also a way to dimension something that's angular. So click on the dimension feature, and then we're going to select the angular dimension tab, and we're gonna first tap our first point here, our second point here, and our third point here. And this is going to show you the angular dimensions once you let go. With the same thing, before lifting up, you can toggle or you can kind of wiggle your pencil to get it to a particular angle if you have in mind, or if you just want to let it go, that's going to give this dimension a 90 degree sign. A little bit of tip just to remember, in order for the dimension feature to work really well, you have to remember the base drawing or the existing drawing you're trying to dimension from has to be calibrated to scale and as accurately as it can be because if the base drawing is off, anything that you dimension from that will be impacted. And I teach all this in my Mofolio Trace Masterclass. I will leave the link below if you are interested in checking that out. Once you're ready to export either as an image or a PDF, we're gonna continue on this. In this file, you can see that the dimensions is going to be exported with this view. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know the team at Mofolo Trace are working to improve this feature with more customizations down the road. So I'm really looking forward to the next version of this.